Welcome back to my writer's room, everyone. Uh, I am Matt Wallace, YouTube's resident angry writer, and thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to come hang out with me here in my angry, lonely little writerly sanctum. I always appreciate that. I really genuinely do. Uh, me not being naked on the vlog is brought to you, as always, by our t-shirt of the day, and today I'm rocking my uh, officially licensed, you can see the cry kid there, they had to make that clear, my officially licensed Cobra Kai t-shirt. Uh, because Cobra Kai never dies. Uh, Cobra Kai is a good thing, and no good thing ever dies. That's right. I just cross-referenced the Karate Kid with the Shawshank Redemption. That's the power of the t-shirt of the day. That's the power of a good gimmick, of a good idea. But no, I just, uh, it's just a cool shirt, and I love the Karate Kid. So, um, they weren't bad people. They were misled. That's the whole point, man. They had a, they had a bad sensei, you know. As Mr. Miyagi himself said... No such thing as a bad student, only bad teacher. And I think there's a very valuable life lesson in there for all of us uh, that stands the test of time, much like the movie itself and my t-shirt. It is February 21st, 2018. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. Uh, you're halfway through the slog of the week. Keep going. You're doing a good job. Uh, if you're making it, you're doing a good job. That's all there is to it. Um, I've drawn Ham Shackle Pig... Uh, this is one of his early ancestors, one of his early cave pig ancestors. You can see he's got his uh, his club there, which actually looks more like a French baguette. But you know, we'll we'll skip past that. But yeah, that's uh, that's cave uh, cave shackle pig there, ham shackle's early ancestor, contemplating this thing called fire, uh, which was a which was a new thing sweeping the land back then. It was the uh, it was the Facebook of his generation <laughs> was fire. And, uh, yeah, I think that's nice, actually. So, yeah, that's uh, Ham Shackle Pig's early ancestor for you. You know, it occurs to me, I, I know and I have known uh, so many truly talented uh, storytellers, truly talented writers who so desperately want to tell stories in uh, all these different mediums and media that we have, whether it's publishing novels or writing comic books or writing television, or writing movies, or writing web series. Um, you know, they, they really want to apply all this natural talent they have to telling these stories, because we've all grown up uh, with these different mediums, and loving and idolizing the great works done within them. But the thing that really stops them is feeling like there's a huge knowledge or skill gap that they can't possibly uh, bridge to get there. You know, they're just writers. They're just, all they know how to do is put words down on a page or type words out in a word program. Like, how do you get from that to a movie? Which is like, it's almost like trying to ascend to godhood for most people. For most people, trying to cross that bridge between I sit in my little room typing on my computer to making a movie or a TV show or a comic book or, or any of that stuff... To them, trying to bridge that gap is a lot like being a cave person <laughs> contemplating fire and not understanding how how that you know, how that could possibly function uh, in the context of their own reality. Like they can't, you can't even conceive of how you do such a thing. How do you go from just telling uh, your little story to translating that to the canvas that you want to translate it to? You know, and it's it's and a lot of that is. Um, is set up intentionally, to be honest with you, especially with the entertainment industry. There's a huge exclusion, exclusionary uh, aspect to the entertainment culture. I think it exists also in publishing and in comics, but I have, I've never seen it as aggressively uh, brutal and violent as it is in the entertainment industry. Um, they intentionally do want to keep people out to a certain extent because that's, that's a control thing. Um, if you've ever wondered, like if you, if you understand a little bit about how movies are made or like you're someone who's interested... Uh, and who makes the movies that you watch. When you look at big studios and big movies and big franchises, you might notice that it's a lot of the same people over and over again directing and writing and producing. Um, and the reason for that, and I will say this outright, is not that they are the most talented people in the world, because they're not, because most big studio movies suck, just flat out. The reason they're in those positions is because the people actually in power, the people with the checkbooks have worked with these people and know they can control them. That's that's absolutely what it is. Um, the Joss Whedon's, the Zack Snyder's, it's not, it has nothing to do with their talent. It really doesn't. It has to do with the fact they can deliver uh, a big product and the studios know that they will work with the studios and the studio executives 
and that they will be able to control the situation. Whenever you've heard someone fired over creative differences, nine times out of 10, 9.9 times out of 10, it meant that it was a creative person who wanted to impose their creative will on a project and the studio wanted to retain control of it and tell them what to do and this person wasn't willing to play ball, so they got fired. The people who sustain and keep getting work are the people that play ball and that studios know uh, will work within the system they've established. That's just the basic truth of the medium. Uh, TV is a little more free range. That's why you see so many people migrating from movies or so many writers, especially migrating from movies to television because it's a much more open uh, field, but it still has its own politics and its own exclusionary practices and its own, you know, its own thing over there. So a lot of that is the culture and it's, it's hard to know how to, how to surmount that. But another big factor in it is just that idea of a technological or a skill set uh, knowledge gap that writers have that precludes them from creating works in these other mediums. I, and, I, and I encounter that all the time when I talk to aspiring writers out there who want to get into TV or into filmmaking or into comics or into even, even publishing their own works, you know, self-publishing if, they, if they're if too intimidated by major publishers or haven't been able to make headway with major publishers. You know, creating your own uh, self-published work <clears throat> can be immensely intimidating to an author, even if you're just trying to create an ebook, you know, try to make a cover and figure out digital distribution and figure out editing. When you have no, uh, you know, uh, knowledge base for any of that, hugely intimidating uh, thing. So I want to introduce you to a couple of friends of mine, okay? These are two of the best friends I've ever had um, in uh, the freelance writing industry. Uh, this is my friend, Mr. Legal Pad, and this is my friend, uh, Mr. Ink Pen. I stole this uh, from an Embassy Suites in uh, Las Vegas, and my wife gets these for me from her uh, office. So these are two of the best friends I've ever had as a freelance writer, and I'll tell you why. Um, everything I've ever done, when I really look back on my career, and I'm not immensely successful, I'm certainly not famous, I'm certainly not rich, but I've done some remarkable shit for a writer who started out with nothing, with no contacts, with no formal education, with no access to industry, uh, truly n nothing to start out with but their own ideas and their own will to go out there and make something happen. I've done some remarkable things in, in many different mediums and in many different industries. And when I really think back on it, every single one of those things started out with a legal pad and a pen. I use this for everything. I use these to outline. I use these to uh, break down uh, stories and scenes and characters and chapters. You know, every project that I work on, uh, whatever it is, it begins with a legal pad and a pen. And that's all I had, uh, literally all I had when I started out with. I didn't even have a computer for some periods because the one I had would, uh, would break down and I wouldn't be able to replace it for a while, you know, but... It always started out with this legal pad and uh, and this and this pen, and that was all I had going for me uh, when I first started out as a freelance writer. So what can you accomplish with a legal pad and a pen? I'll just I'll give you my limited experience with that. How about um, a seven book deal with a major publisher? How about uh, twenty five episodes of an entertainment television show that's internationally syndicated by one of the biggest television distributors? on the planet uh what about an animated web series based on a, a toy and game line what about uh episodes of an original science fiction anthology series that was syndicated in 11 million homes uh, uh in an on-demand service um what about uh, a high-level marketing job uh, working for a, for a marketing company that has offices in Hong Kong and London and New York and services uh, global brands and clients worth hundreds of millions of dollars and we have to create all of their ad campaigns, all of their websites, all of their social media. And if you're someone who does that, and I am, I start everything with a legal pad and a pen. All of those things that I've done, and I and those are all things that I've done. The the books and the television. Uh, I've worked on uh, movies. They haven't ended up getting produced most of the time, but I've I've been paid to work on some pretty decently, uh, you know, high level indie projects. Everything I've done, all of those things started with that legal pad and that pen, and I had and I had no other uh, knowledge uh, beyond that. I didn't. I did. I uh, you know doing this. This uh, YouTube channel, Doing Angry Writer here, which I've only been doing for the last four months, 
you know, out of the 12 years that I've been a freelance writer, this was hugely intimidating to me because I'm not a filmmaker, you know. I know how to write for film, but um, I have always been intimidated by creating my own uh, video content. And that's something I've only just recently got over. And this channel started with me scribbling on a legal pad uh, ideas for it, the format, and what I wanted to call everything. And now uh, here we are creeping up on 500 subscribers. I vlog every day. I, I'm, I've learned to edit to a decent degree. I'm adding to my skill set every day. And all that started with the legal pad and just the will to do it. That's all I had. And from that, I was able to accomplish all of those things I just talked about and participate in all of those mediums that I have participated in at, at reasonably high professional uh, levels. And the only and, and, and that was it, man. I mean, it, you know, there's stories behind how I got all of those gigs. As I said, the access and the, the exclusionary practice of those industries, those are a huge factor that you have to deal with that have nothing to do with the knowledge uh, gap that you, that, you know, is also a thing to be afraid of. But on just this side of things, all you had to do, all I had to do to overcome this was to forget about all of it, was just to forget about whatever I didn't know and just concentrate on my pen and my legal pad the ideas that I had, the stories I wanted to tell, and making those as just dope as I could, man. Just making them amazing, making those stories as good as I possibly could, and everything else followed from that. It really did. Any networking I did, any uh, schmoozing that I did, any um, you know professional contacts I made, the ways I found to get over the wall, these industries, none of them, none of them were based in anything other than me telling people, hey, I got this thing I'm working on. Uh, let me take it from my legal pad, make it a little prettier for you, and here's my idea, and here's the story, and here's what I want to do. And them going, hey, this kid's got something. This kid knows knows a little something about something, uh, and I think that we could use them on our project, or we should tell this story, or we should adapt this story, or uh, you know, just convincing people that you have the skills is, is all that is required. And all that is required to get there is to get the shit out of your head and onto a page. And that can be the page in a legal pad and it can take you as far as you need to go in any of these mediums, I promise you that. No one knows uh, more than you do about any of this stuff. I, I promise you that. That's, that's another thing that you need to learn to really get what I'm trying to tell you here. Nobody knows more than you, they really don't. Nobody knows what, what a good story is. Nobody knows what a great story is. Nobody knows what story is going to sell. Everybody is throwing darts at a board uh, in the dark, and sometimes the board isn't even on the damn wall. It, I, I, I can't stress enough how true that is. It doesn't mean there aren't smart people out there who can guide you. You know, I have an agent whose advice I listen to because I think he has a very good taste level and a very good sense of the publishing industry, and I find that advice uh, valuable. But even even then, even he will admit, nine times out of ten, nobody has any idea what's what's going to move. You just you 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 utilize the data at your disposal and you make your best educated guess. So I know it can be intimidating to look at all these industry professionals that you admire and you think they know so much more than me. They have so much more knowledge and so many more skills that I don't possess. That's all bullshit. They don't. They, they really don't. They were exactly like you. All they've had is the benefit of time that you haven't expended yet to get to where they are. That's the only difference between you and anyone you idolize in any medium doing the work that you want to do, whether it's movies, television, comics, books, web series, music, graphic design, it doesn't matter. Anything you can create, the people that you idolize, the only thing that they have on you is time. They've put more time than you have into trying to achieve what they wanted to achieve, so now they're there. Now it's your turn to do what they did, and you don't know any less than they did when you started out. It doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter. All it takes, and I will stress this, is for you to sit your ass down, get what's in your head out of it, and shape it into the best, uh, most appealing to you, first and foremost, a uh, story that you can, okay? When we talk about content, you know, that catch-all phrase these days, everything's become content now, because it's not just movies and TVs and comics and, you know, easily defined media. It's all this random shit um, on the internet and uh, all this digital content that defies easy categorization. There are millions of different kinds of content now but all of it boils down to it has some kind of story that people want to want to hear even if it's a very basic story it has something that connects with them 
on that very visceral level. And that's the only thing you have to find to be a success in any of these businesses and, and to gain ultimately the access you need to gain to get into these businesses. I'll do another vlog sometime about the professional side of things and networking and getting over those walls that have been built up to keep your, uh, your humble ass out of it so people can keep control of the industries that they're in control of. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do an episode on that sometimes. But right now, I just wanted to talk to everybody out there um, I've, I've ever spoken with or interacted with on Twitter or at a convention and people like them who think that there's this knowledge gap that is going to prevent them from participating or creating or being successful in any of these industries and just basically tell you that those don't exist. Those, the gap does not exist. It's, it's an illusion. There's a bridge straight across it. All you have to do is take that first step and that first step, get a legal pad and a pen, get that shit out of your head and write a good story. Okay. Story is the foundation on which content is built. I will, I will die by that maxim. And that's all you need to be successful in these, uh, in these industries. So that's basically what I wanted to say today. And I hope, uh, I hope, hope you all heard me on it. And I hope, I hope you really take it to heart because it's, it's serious shit. Um, any success I've had, th this is exactly how I've had it. The advice I'm giving you right now. That's, this is probably the best advice, the most true practical advice I can conjure for you. Um, and I, and I, again, I hope you take it to heart. That is it for today. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, ask a question, suggest a topic for me to talk about, uh, here on the vlog. I just like hearing from you. Always enjoy hearing what you had for lunch. That was a good time yesterday. It made me really hungry, but that's okay. I live vicariously, uh, through all of you. Um, I will be back, uh, for the remainder of the week to get you to the weekend as I always am. Uh, until then I am Matt Wallace, uh, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.